Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel and for joining me for the Distress Oxide Colour Combination series. Now this is a series of videos looking at each of the Distress Oxide colours in turn. We're working through them alphabetically. We're now onto faded jeans. We're getting towards around about 20 videos up already within the playlist on my channel. So I'd love it if you could give me a subscribe, go and check out the playlist. Uh, definitely comment and thumbs up on the videos you really like. Um, yeah, and I can keep doing this all the way through till we get through every single colour. And then who knows, maybe I'll have to move on to the inks or something else. So today is faded jeans, as I say, a lovely dusky blue. Now I call it a dusky blue because it's kind of got that grey tone to it. It's not a bright blue. Um, I'd say it's mid, so it's not light or a dark. It's a mid-range blue. So it's a really nice all-rounder. Now for each of the uh, colours that we're going to be focusing on, I'm going to start off with a little swatch of the colour so you can clearly see what it looks like on paper. Now the reason being, and I'm always going on to white paper, of course you can experiment with going on to different colours, but the reason being is when you actually swatch the colours, you can usually see a little bit of a difference between your swatch and the label there. Not a huge difference. I mean, the very good ranger are very good at keeping the labels as accurate as possible, but obviously it's impossible really to get a print that is absolutely identical. And it also, of course, always depends on the paper you're going onto too. Now the paper that I'm going onto, the brushes, the ink pads, the blending mats, everything I'm using is all linked down below. And as you'll see throughout this video, the importance of making a swatch chart for yourself um, there is also a free downloadable swatch chart for you with all the Distress Oxide colours so far uh, available on my website. And again, that is linked down below too. So the next thing we're going to do is look at four colours that I have within my stash that kind of sit around this colour, so faded jeans. So when you look at them all, you probably think that actually Chip Sapphire is the closest um, when you look at the labels. Now, when I say I pick the colours closest to this, I actually do it by the labels because nine times out of 10, that's probably the way that you are going to choose them. When you're looking online, um, when you're browsing for your next new colour, I'd imagine you'll look at the label, you'll look at the image of the label online uh, and purchase. So this is why I look at the label and, and say, these all look reasonably similar to Distress Oxide. So if I just put that in the middle, you can see they've all got similarities, slightly lighter, slightly more blue, slightly more green, slightly darker. But do you know what, online it might be very difficult for you to see and decide which one you actually really need in your stash next. So what I've done is I have swatched these four for you so you really can see the difference. And this is the importance, or really shows the importance of having a swatch book for yourself because when we look at these this way now, we can see how closely they do and don't actually sit next to other colours. So I have got Uncharted Mariner. I've got Chipped Sapphire. Actually has a hint of purple in it there. A prize Ribbon, a very blue. And Stormy Sky, which is a bit of a grey blue. And of course, Uncharted Mariner is a little bit of a, on the teal side. So then we take Faded Jeans. And as I said at the beginning, Faded Jeans really is a good kind of all-rounder blue colour. And you'll see from this what I mean now, because we've got very, very bright royal blue, the purple, the green and the grey in here. And this is just blue. <laughs> but when we put them together, actually, I think, I think really Stormy Sky is one of the closest, although a lighter shade, I think it's one of the closest to them. But as we put them along, now we noticed the labels of these two looked the most similar. But actually, when you put the two together like this, they're really not similar at all. So like I say, so important to do your swatch book. Go and check that out on my website linked down below. You can download one for free. So this is Faded Jeans. Now let's take a look at a couple of colour combinations. We're always going to do colour combinations with these. So I'm going to bring in a three colour combination. First of all, using Faded Jeans in the middle and I'm going to be using Weathered Wood and Dusky, sorry, Dusty Concord. I added an extra um, K in there somewhere. So let's put the purple down, first of all. So a lovely purple, a creamy purple actually, or more of a mauve. It's got a bit of a pink tone to it, this one. I was going to use the Villainous Potion, but I actually changed my mind on that at the last minute and decided that was a bit too dark. I wanted something within this colour combination to just lift up the colour. So I've put the two colours side by side, just about overlapped them a little. With what's left on my brush from Faded Jeans, I'm going to work in circles from the edge of the cardstock 
just lightly working across into that purple until there's no more ink left on my brush going into the purple there. I think that's enough. I don't, and sometimes I'll actually go in with my purple and then I'll work that up to where we've just blended as well and keep going back and forth until I've got, I'm happy with the, uh, the like the transition between the two. But here, I'm more than happy with that. So that's, I mean, those two together, aren't they so pretty? Absolutely beautiful. And then if you do your sort of your, your uh, dropping of water on there and get those that water reaction coming through as well, that's going to work beautifully. So let's just remove my purple from here, wipe my mat, and let's go on to the next color in this combination, and that's weathered wood. So this is very much a gray blue. And just pop this on the end. This uh, makes a lovely Halloween combination. It makes a masculine combina combination. It just works. If you want something a little deeper and darker, if you don't want anything too bright or flowery or summer-like, because we don't always, this is a nice one actually for winter time. If you're going to add something like some nice snowflakes over the top, maybe you've got a snowflake panel die and you want to add that. I've actually got one coming out with textures soon. Uh, so that's exciting. I think that might be the next collection launching actually. Um, so there we go. So we have the Dusty Concord faded jeans and going into weathered wood, which is still a blue, but very much on the gray scale there. So let's now move on to our next color combination, drying my mat off so the water doesn't react. Um, let's pop these brushes to the side. I do have a brush for every color and I only use them for my oxides. So I'm going to use the, let's just mix these around. There we go. Okay, so happy with that combination. So we're looking at black soot, faded jeans, hickory smoke and carved pumpkin. So black soot first of all. In fact, no, let's not. Let's go with carved pumpkin. I prefer to add black soot at the end only because I like to work it into the end of my color swatch or, or strip or ombre or panel, whatever you want to call it, whatever your background. I like to work it in at the end and that kind of, I can then decide how much of the black that I actually need. Sometimes you just want to put the black along the very edge and just pick out the finest bit of it. Sometimes you actually want a nice big panel of black. So this one's going to be really nice and bright at this end. And because I'm then going into a gray, which is nowhere near orange usually, but of course being a neutral, it can go into it. I'm going to remove the orange from my mat. I'm going to go into hickory smoke next, which is a nice gray, a darker gray than say lost shadow. This is very much uh, a very masculine sort of a teenage boy type uh, color combination here. I'm going to work into the orange a little. Now what I'm doing is I'm not pushing up and pushing up and pushing up into the orange. I'm just working alongside it and gradually the orange starts to come down. I'm going to add a bit more because I think the gray is quite strong. Although the orange is a strong color, so is the gray. So just work that gray up into the orange and then the orange down into the gray. So chopping and changing between your two brushes until you're happy. Now, I know this isn't faded jeans, but isn't that a lovely combination? If you want something that's bright, but not childlike, I think that's really nice. So again, wipe my mat. And then I'm going to go into faded jeans. I, in fact, years ago, I did do a scrapbook page. Uh, it was my little boy stuffing his face full of chocolate, I think it was. Uh, and I actually used blues and greys with a hint of orange. Orange was like my contrast color and it just worked so well. I loved it. I put it up on display for a long time. It was perfect. So just now going into the blues here. So fade, I'm going to do quite a bit of this because like I say, black soot can be quite overpowering uh, unless you know you want a lot of it. Now, I've actually lost some of my gray there. I, I, haven't, I haven't really gone down far enough with my gray. So rather than blending the blue up into the gray and completely losing the gray, I'm going to bring some more of the gray down into the blue. So loading up my brush with lots of ink on there, always working in circles. I'm going to go across that middle strip where it's just gray and then start working down. I'm just going to wipe off my brush onto a piece of tissue just to take off any blue that might be on there. Then I'm going to load it up again and I'm going to do the same, starting a bit lower down this time. And again, work down 
into the blue. There we go. Okay, that's not too bad at all. And that way I haven't brought that gray up into, or rather haven't brought that blue up into the gray. I've done it the other way around, so we haven't lost that gray strip anymore. And lastly, let's do our black soot. So just going on to the end here. Now black soot within the Distress Oxide range is nowhere near as black as the ink. It's more of a charcoal color. I say this every time I use it. Don't be fooled by the name. It's not all, it is more actually more realistic to soot. It's more of a dark charcoal. So just putting that on the end and then I'm going to bring the faded jeans into that. So it's just a hint on the very end. And there is my color combination. Now I have put my finger in there. So just be careful with um, holding your strip. Now, if I'm doing this, if I was doing this as a background, what I would tend to do is always blend onto a larger piece of cardstock than I'm going to need. So I've got something to hold. If I want to then die cut or anything, I've got something to stick my dies onto. And then afterwards I will trim everything down. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've enjoyed looking at Faded Jeans Distress Oxide in more detail. Please do subscribe and give me a thumbs up and stay tuned for more in this series as we work our way throughout the alphabet.